Well, let's speak now to Joshua Mahoney, the chief market analyst at Scope Markets. Joshua, has the Fed nailed this? Has it achieved a, a possible dream soft landing for the US economy, tackling inflation without a huge sort of spike in unemployment? Well, so far, you know, we have seen things looking relatively soft in terms of that landing, but it, it could just be the beginning. I mean, ultimately, we've started to see some of the economic data turning significantly towards the downside, both here in Europe and over in the US. And certainly the question mark here is with the fact that those higher interest rates could have a somewhat lagging effect, you know, is this the worst it's going to get or is this just the beginning of it? So certainly the Federal Reserve is going to have to weigh that up when they decide whether they're going to increase interest rates further and for how long they're going to have those interest rates higher for longer. What's your view on the likelihood of a recession now in the United States? It's the world's biggest economy. It affects us all. Yeah, I think that the U.S. economy looks healthier than others, quite frankly. And certainly if you look at inflation, 3.2 percent, we've got over double that here in the U.K. And that means that the Federal Reserve is going to be able to become accommodative quicker than in the U.K. Certainly so far, if you look at sort of consumption behaviors, the U.S. consumer has remained remarkably strong throughout this whole crisis, despite the fact that we see higher interest rates, people continue to spend. So I think so far, the, the risk of recession has remained relatively low. And I think the risk at the moment is more around a recession in Europe over a recession in the US. Speaking of which, just how far behind are other countries? I'm thinking about Europe, I'm thinking about here in the UK. Are they in tackling inflation and the interest rate cycles? Are we going to see interest rates, for example, in this country continue to move up or do you think they might plateau? I think that's been the theme recently is that we've been seeing the strength of the euro, the strength of the pound off the back of this uh, sort of uh, dynamic differential dynamic between the expectation here and the expectation over in the US. And that's because we found it much more difficult for us to be able to drive down inflation in because of the proximity of the Ukraine-Russia uh, crisis and, and, and the fact that we then had to switch our resources elsewhere away from, from Russian gas. The U.S. didn't necessarily have that same problem and they're a major producer and therefore we had a bigger problem when it came to sourcing energy and paying for energy and therefore we had higher inflation. Um, so certainly I think it's a bigger problem here, um, but we have been making significant swathes. It, it is notable that whilst we've been seeing the, the U.S. certainly leading Europe in terms of driving down inflation, they, alongside us, uh, haven't necessarily been particularly great when it comes to driving down core inflation. So there's headline inflation and there's core. The core inflation is a big problem. And we saw it yesterday when we saw the, the Federal Reserve's favoured uh, reading, which is the core PCE, uh, moving uh, towards the upside. Essentially, this strips out volatile factors such as food, such as energy, and essentially leaves you with... The, essentially the parts that the Federal Reserve and the Bank of England can actually do something about. And that hasn't necessarily been moving as quickly towards the downside. So I do think they're going to feel like they have some way to go. Really interesting. Thanks very much, Joshua, uh, talking to us there about U.S. interest rates. And uh, just to let you know that the employment data will be out uh, about lunchtime here in the U.K.